to Talk the Money in the Morning Live with your main man, Ace Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community, everybody's favorite fatherpreneur, where I do my absolute best to bring practical yet proven wealth building strategies to working men and women all over this great nation of ours. Truly an honor, privilege, and a blessing to come to you live and direct from the Generational Wealth Building Conference Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. It is going down just a couple weeks out, guys, April 6th through the 8th. The Generational Wealth Building Conference in Atlanta, GA, Friday through Sunday is power packed full of what we call edutainment, where you get educated and entertained, uh, but you're coming together with a bunch of people who understand the plight of our community and they are absolutely looking for solutions, developing solutions. Some of them got solutions and need soldiers to help with the execution of the solutions. Man, if you are serious about reclaiming our communities, rebuilding them, then you need to be in Atlanta GA April 6th through the 8th. Hands down. Go to wealth.joincortezenow.com. Again, wealth.joincortezenow.com to claim your tickets. You can get a weekend pass for $150 or you can buy passes to individual events there uh, and just kind of partake a la carte, if you will. That sounds like something that you want to participate in. Uh, absolutely do that. And then if you're a business owner, you should have an ad in the publications that are being produced for that event as well. I think it's 20, 25 bucks for a business card size ad. Get your half page ad. Promote in that environment where there are a bunch of people coming together and all they want to do is support other black owned businesses. So you can get all that information at wealth.joincortez. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wealth.joincortezenow.com. Do me a huge favor if you're checking this out on YouTube. We are going to hit 2,000 subscribers in the month of March. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button uh, on the YouTube channel. And also make sure that you rate the show. Thumbs up, thumbs down. And you can interact with the show on faith on YouTube as well. All you got to do is comment. I can see your comments live. And in real time, we are at 1,779 subscribers. So a couple hundred more to go. So help us out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And then my Facebook family, go over to YouTube.com forward slash Financial Health Mentor and hit the subscribe button. I know you love to watch over here on Facebook, but the show is transitioning to where the full blown production of the show is actually going to be on uh, YouTube uh, with all of the commercials and all of the other advertising and promotions and all of that stuff. And then the Facebook will be more of the behind the scenes stuff. So I'm really, really wanting to uh, get you guys accustomed to coming over to YouTube as we start making the transition. Uh, and also, um, you're on YouTube, you can hit the share button too uh, if you want to. Uh, you can share it to your Facebook timeline, you can share it to Twitter, uh, Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, uh, and things of that nature. My Facebook family, you guys know the price of admission is what? Share the stream. The price of admission is a simple share. Hit the share button. Uh, you never know what man on your timeline is looking for this sort of validation. Believe it or not, I was looking for this. A lot of uh, of the stuff that I I knew um, or I sensed that what what I was being taught and trained that manhood was it just didn't sit right in my spirit. Uh, and I really started to to get in tune and in touch with myself. And I was like, you know what? That ain't being a real man. 
Uh, so definitely hit the share button. There's probably some brothers on your timeline that's looking for this kind of information. Uh, and if you want to give me a tip, then you can do the hearts, the likes, the thumbs up, all that kind of stuff. That lets Facebook know we got some good quality content and they'll push it out to more and more people for us each and every day. Today's show is also brought to you by the Black Wealth Movement. There's an economic revolution taking place uh, and I want you to be a part of it. See, we are where we are as a community of people because there is no financial education being taught in mass in our community. We're putting together a crusade where we're going to teach working black people and black people with businesses how to really educate themselves, their families first, and then their neighbors on how capitalism really works in this country. $70 to start, less than $50 per month, you get your financial education membership. Listen, you got your church membership for your spiritual health. You got your gym membership for your physical health. You got your uh, uh, um, diet uh, membership where you're learning how to eat right. Uh, you got your social membership where you're learning how to make friends and, 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 and be social. You need a financial membership where you're going to be able to get your financial health in order. And there's nothing better than what we do on this planet, guys. I promise you, nobody is teaching black people about how money works and how to build multi-generational wealth like we are. It's time for you to step out on faith, lock arms with us, get your money right first, and then let us help you become a teacher, a trainer, and an educator to help your neighbors get their money right. Because at the end of the day, somebody's got to be able to write a check for all of the ills that we see that's going wrong in our community. It's time to stop talking about it. We can talk about we need our own schools. We can talk about what the prison school, the prison pipeline is doing. We can talk about, uh, 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 you know, our boys selling dope, our girls selling their bodies, dancing and stuff. But if we're not cutting checks, to create other opportunities, to give them jobs. We can talk about the buildings falling down in our community and then get mad when another culture comes in and buys that stuff up and pushes us out when they raise the price. We can keep talking about that stuff if we want to, but somebody's got to be able to write a check to fix some of that stuff. And that's what we're doing, Black Wealth Movement. So uh, never fails when we get to going hard on Facebook. Uh, we having problems with the stream. Let's see if Facebook is gonna allow us to reconnect, right? So if you're interested in that, all you gotta do is um, text Black Wolf Movement to 314-874-6887. Again, text Black Wolf Movement to 314-874-6887. Um, trying to give Facebook a second to reconnect uh, i'm not sure what's going on it says my wi-fi signal is strong i'm right here next to my wireless router so um uh, but you know facebook has its way of shutting you down if they want you to be uh shut down <laughs> so we want to get into part two of our uh looks like this might be a two-part series we'll try to wrap it up today if not it's no big deal we'll we'll go into thursday um uh, and get this thing done. But we're talking about uh, reclaiming the male spirit and overcoming this, what I call a fake TV macho, fake TV bravado. Uh, everything that you see on TV about manhood, about 75 to 80% of that is absolutely false. Uh, man, and in fact, um, oh, there's Facebook, all right. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, Lakeisha? Uh, Facebook came back to life for me. Uh, so uh, I was just telling the folks on YouTube, uh, if you want to learn more about the Black Wolf Movement, uh, 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 text Black Wolf Movement to 314-874-6887. Text Black Wolf Movement, 314-874-6887. So we're talking about reclaiming the, uh, the male spirit. Uh, and it's basically, this is my take, and this is what this is my own personal observation. Uh, someone can challenge this if they want, but I just think, in my spirit, what I see uh, in today's society, um, especially with everything TV, movies, there is a false 
sense of macho and bravado being shoved down our throats. Uh, and it's really causing a lot of harm um, in our communities. And this book right here by Iyala Van Zandt is Reclaiming the Male Spirit, A Guide to Transforming Emotions into Power and Freedom. Um, men don't even want to acknowledge that emotions <laughs> live, right? Uh, because when you look at TV, you look at media, you look at movies, you look at uh, uh, society at large, men are trained that to uh, show emotion is a sign of weakness. Men are trained to um, bury their emotions because if, uh, if you acknowledge your feelings, you're basically soft, right? Um, and that thinking and that ideology is really killing us in our communities, right? Because what we tend to do, since we're taught that you can't experience any emotions, then we we go into hyper uh suppression of those emotions and that you you see a lot of that in, in the hood um you know a lot of that with with the gang banging and 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 the dope selling and the territory seizing and all that kind of stuff that's that's just a hyper masculinity at work because of what we've been taught and trained uh as men how to respond that's not real manhood. It's really not. Uh, so we're going to talk about that today. Uh, and in this book, Yala Van Zandt gives some tools. Uh, she basically calls it your spiritual toolbox. A spiritual toolbox, starting with, uh, and I'll give you the list of what those things are real quick. Um, Let me see. The power tools, your spiritual power tools are willingness, awareness, acknowledgement, acceptance, confession, surrender, forgiveness, understanding, commitment, responsibility, right action, and stillness. Those are the power tools. Willingness, awareness, acknowledgement, acceptance, confession, surrender, forgiveness, understanding, commitment, responsibility, right action, and stillness. So yesterday, we just kind of did an introduction. I'm going to try to get to through most of these as possible. We talked about number one, willingness. And willingness is broken down into three parts. You have to first recognize the need to change. Then you have to desire the change. And then you have to discipline to maintain the change. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, if you want to go to uh, yesterday's show on YouTube or Facebook and catch the, the, the whole thing. But we, as men, we can do what's called settle into a groove, right? As men, I, I think all my brothers who are on the stream right now will agree is that we need very little to be content. We need very little to be, to be content. And when we find that little that we need to be content, we will settle into a groove and we can be, we can ride that groove for 50, 60, 70 years because it doesn't take much for us to be content. And while we're in that groove, things could be working just fine. But just because things are working fine does not mean they can't be improved upon. So sometimes when we tell a brother, look yourself in the mirror, uh, and see if you can be better, they immediately begin to think that something must be wrong. No, nothing's wrong. We just want to get better. We're just trying to go from glory to glory, right? So uh, you have to acknowledge that, yes, I can demand more of me. Yes, I can be a better version of me. Yes, I did well yesterday. Yes, I did well last year, but I can do even better. And there's nothing wrong with that. So you have to have the, uh, recognize that you can be better, uh, have the desire to get better. And then once you get better, you have to have the discipline to maintain that. Uh, and then number two was awareness. Awareness. See, we have to uh, 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 understand that when it comes to our awareness, most of us are responding based on past hurts, traumas and experiences that we are not aware of. Most of our responses today come from bad past hurts, experiences, or traumas 
uh, from our past and we're not aware of how it's causing and um, uh, how it's is causing our be or how it's affecting our behavior today. See, I had to get with that. There's certain things that I do in my life today is a direct result of some past hurts, traumas or experiences. And I, I have to be aware of that so I don't let that past hurt affect me negatively today. Right. Can't let that past hurt affect me negatively today. Sometimes when we uh, act out, uh, it's not about today. It's about something that happened to us in our past. And whatever whatever triggered us acting out today is usually because that person either reminds us of that situation or the situation is very similar to a past uh, trauma. We didn't like the outcome then. So we're trying to create a new outcome by the way we're behaving today. So you've got to understand how to uh, be aware of your connection to your activities and behaviors today and how they stem from past hurts, traumas, and experiences. Let's get to um, the next one on the list, number three, acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. So uh, you have to not only be aware of your feelings, especially anger, but you need to put a name on what you're feeling. See, you, you, it's not enough. You, it starts with being aware. Okay, I'm aware that every time I'm in this type of situation, I feel this way. The question is why? It's time for you to put a name on it. And say, wait a minute. You know why I feel this way? Because I was bullied when I was in elementary school. And now whenever I feel bullied, I didn't like the fact that I was so frightened when I was bullied. Now, every time I feel like somebody is trying to bully me, I really puff up, I swell up, and I really get super, super hyper defensive. All because of something that happened to you when you was nine years old. See, you have to put a name on it. And now you have to start asking yourself, okay, is this person really trying to bully me? Am I really being bullied in this situation? Can I can I respond differently if this person is trying to bully me versus being hyper defensive? Right. So you got to put a name on it. If you know, if you're aware of some of the triggers that are bringing up those emotions from your past, your distant, distant past, you got to put a name on that. So if you got to acknowledge this acknowledgement is a key step towards healing. Awareness of your feeling is essential, but it's not enough. You can be fully aware of something and fail to acknowledge it. You can be fully aware of something and fail to acknowledge it or put a name on it. It says alcohol and subject abusers uh, like Roy. She's talking about this guy named Roy who had a, a crazy uh, abusive and trauma filled life uh, are prime examples. They may know that they can't get through the day without a drink yet they fail to acknowledge that they're addicted so you can be aware and not put a name on it you can be aware and not acknowledge it yeah i'm aware you know i was aware that i was smoking weed every day trying to mask my pain trying to self-medicate but i was i i was i refused to acknowledge that there were some problems leading me to 10 blunts a day or whatever it was i was smoking right? There was problems there. So I was aware that I was uh, uh, smoking every day to max something, but I wasn't aware. I was not willing to acknowledge that I was hiding or trying to mask a problem. You got to put a name on it. Acknowledgement means uh, being in a state of recognition of what you're thinking and feeling. It's the way in which you honor and support your right to be and to feel a right that society, which its emphasis on the denial of men's inner self, does all it can to repress. I want y'all to hear that, especially my fellows who are tuning in, man. It says. It's the recognition of what you're thinking and feeling. It's the way in which you honor and support your right to be 
and to feel. See, society has robbed men of our right to feel however we're feeling. It has robbed us of our right to be uh, fully okay with our state of being. And it's telling all men that you have to be this cookie cutter. This is the definition of man and that's what it is. And if you're not this, you're not a man. It's robbing us of our right to be and to feel. It's okay to feel however it is you're feeling. Now, some of the things that you do based on how you're feeling are not okay. But it is 100% okay for you to feel the way that you feel. Now, I've raised seven boys through my house, five of my own, uh, a nephew and a cousin. And one of the things I had to try to get them to see over and over that it's okay to feel however you're feeling. Right. One of my favorite all time lyrics. I can't remember the name of the song, but the young lady or I don't even know if it's a young lady or a young man. But in the point of singing the song about some trauma and some hurt, they say it's OK not to be OK. It's OK not to be OK. A lot of my brothers are not OK. A lot of us. I would say about 90% of us are not okay. But you know what, fellas, if you're listening today, I want you to know that it's okay not to be okay. Because it starts with acknowledgement. It starts with awareness. It starts with feeling that fully. Because until you can admit that you're not okay, you're going to keep trying to drink the pain away. Until you can admit that you're not okay, you're going to keep trying to sex the pain away. Until you can admit that you're not okay, you're going to keep trying to fight the pain away. You're going to keep trying to argue the pain away. You're going to keep trying to buy the pain away. You're going to keep trying to do all of these things, smoke the pain away, work the pain away. Bro, it's all right. It's okay if you're not okay. Acknowledge that, feel that, and then let's get some help. Let's get some help. It's, 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 it's okay to not be okay. Because what's happening is this face that we put on every day to make it appear as if we're okay, every day we put on that face, we die a little more inside every single day. I want y'all to hear this, man, because this this is this this is healing for me. It, it, it really helped me. Every day we put on that face to pretend that we're okay. Every day we put on that face, we die inside a little bit more. Every day we do that. It's okay not to be okay. And when you acknowledge that, then you start to ask the right questions. Okay, I feel that. I'm not okay. Something's not quite right. And then you start asking yourself, okay, well, what is it that's not quite right? And you start to do some probing. You start to do some uh, uh, internal inventory. And then you can start shaking some things up on the inside and say, you know what? I'm not okay because my sister said this to me when I was 10 years old. Give an example. My sister loves me to death. I love my sister to death. But in a moment of her trauma in her childhood, she said to me one day, she said she wished I was not in her life. And for a long time, that affected our relationship. For a very long time. She said to me, I was a kid, I was about 12, 13, I might not even been that old, but she said, this is my oldest sister. She said something to the effect that she wished I wasn't in her life. And I held on to that, and for a long time, I was not okay because of that. And it wasn't until I was able to acknowledge that I wasn't OK, that I started doing some internal soul searching. So I was thinking, saying, hey, OK, what is it that I'm not OK about? And I started 
uncovering a lot of this stuff. And I had to eventually address the sister. You remember when you said she didn't even remember. So I'm holding on to something that she said in a moment of weakness, in a moment of pain. She didn't even remember saying it. And of course, that's not how she feels about her little brother today. Wasn't how she felt about me then. But she was in a moment of pain, stress and trauma. It was a past hurt that caused her to say that. It's OK not to be OK. Let's acknowledge it and then let's start asking the questions. OK, if I'm not OK, why not? If I got my house. I've got my, uh, my, my, my car. I've got my family. I, I've got everything I've always aspired to have in life. But for some reason, I'm still not OK. Let's ask the question. Why not? But you'll never ask that question unless you acknowledge that first. Really quickly, let me go to my public announcement for today. It's usually a quarter of the day, but this is more like a public announcement of the day. And one, 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 since I'm talking to the fellas, man, let's 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 help heal our community, man. Our boys are selling drugs and our girls are selling their bodies because we offer them no entrepreneurial opportunities. Our boys are selling drugs and our girls are selling their bodies because we offer them no entrepreneurial opportunities. This is from my man, ERGJ, uh, author of the Black Billionaires Club. If you guys want to grab this book, go to the blackbillionairesclub.com, get this book and a free class on how to Bitcoin, uh, learn all about cryptocurrencies. Learn about the 12 richest black folks in the world. The 12 richest black folks in the world. All of these black people are billionaires today. So he wrote this book so that we can do a study of how they became wealthy, what they had to overcome, what they had to endure, the industries that they're in so that we can model what they've done if we want to be billionaires. TheBlackBillionairesClub.com. And this is so profound because I've, I've ex I experienced that as a young man, me and my crew, we were just some, some, some go-getters, man, from a very young age. You know, we cut the grass, rake the leaves, we clean garages and basements, whatever we can do to make some change, we pump gas for quarter so we can play video games all day. Whatever we could do to make some change, that's what we did. And when the older hustlers, in our community saw our hustle. They saw our entrepreneurial spirit. They perverted it. Now, just as easily as our entrepreneurial endeavors were perverted. By the older hustlers in the community. If there were some older entrepreneurs who were doing it the legit way, we could have just as easily been pulled to that side of the fence and been running multi-million dollar businesses today because somebody who was an entrepreneur doing it the right way took us under their wing when we were 10, 11, 12 years old and said, hey, let me really show you how to turn your uh, your, your, your little lawnmower business. Let me invest in you. Let me put a couple grand in you, get you some real equipment and show you how to create accounts and start really going out here and building a business around lawn care. So every summer you can make your 10, 15, $20,000. Let me show you how you can hire some of your friends and teach them the business. And now y'all got three, four, five franchises uh, in your community based on you. You see what's missing here? See, we can keep screaming to our brothers, man, stop selling dope, stop selling dope, stop selling dope. Stop selling dope, stop. Until you give them an opportunity that's equally as lucrative to where they can become self-made because that's all they're trying to do is become self-made men. That's all they're trying to do. There are some people, most, most people who work jobs and are corporate minded can't get this. There's some people just like I can't get how you can be corporate minded only you will never understand the entrepreneurial bug. So when your young hustler wants, uh, you're trying to tell these young brothers to go get a job, they can't comprehend that. 
So it's up to guys like me who are entrepreneurs to get back in these communities and start saying, young brother, I know where you are. I know who you are. I see you. You're an entrepreneur. But you got two babies at home and this line of entrepreneurship is going to take you away from them. Let me show you how to use Instagram and start making you some money. Let me show you how to use uh, uh, PayPal. Let me show you how to take your life and put it into a book. And then you go ahead and start selling that book. Let me show you how to transform and transition out of this world into this new world. And then you can become a public speaker teaching young men how to do that all over the country. Now you're getting 10, 12, 20 grand per speaking engagement. A 90 minute keynote will get you 20 grand and won't get you killed. And you still feed your family. You still live the lifestyle you want to live. You still become self-made. Queen, let me show you how to write your story and tell people how you got seduced into dancing. And how you got out of this life and now you become an example of what not to do and you can go and speak to kids in schools all over the world. They're going how to stay out of that life and you can do it on a legit tip. And you can make the same money on a legit tip as you do taking your clothes for Noah's to reach back and show them there's another way. So I apologize, y'all. It looks like we're not going to get nearly as far as I thought we were uh, in our uh, uh, spiritual toolkit. But acknowledgement, you got to acknowledge. Let's see if we can fly through some of these today. All right. So number uh, three was acknowledgement. Number four, acceptance. Number four is acceptance. Acceptance, which involves embracing the truth of spirit and of spiritual principles. When you embrace the truth, you're released from psychological and emotional turmoil. Acceptance brings with it an inner knowledge that all is well. All is in divine order, even when there's no evidence of order in your immediate world. Acceptance also brings the ability to transcend judgment of right and wrong and of the toxic emotions of fear, anger, shame, and guilt. Acceptance also brings the ability to transcend judgment of right and wrong and of the toxic emotions of fear, anger, shame, and guilt. You got to come to a place where you get comfortable with who you are at this stage in your life. I spent the first 27 years of my life, 28 years of my life. Trying really, really hard to convince the world that I really was who I was pretending to be. Somebody needs to hear that today because it's time to stop pretending. I spent the first 26, 27, 28 years of my life trying really, really hard to convince the world that I really was who I was pretending to be. And it wasn't until I got out of the mental hospital the last time. Uh, and, and, and this time I stayed for weeks and I let them treat me. Uh, because I had gone in and out a couple times and I just wouldn't let them treat me. I would cheat the medicine. I wasn't trying to do all that. I'm just trying to do my 72 hours and get out of there. Right. But I really, really, really let them treat me over the course of a couple weeks. And when I got out that final time. Is when I accepted. Cortez for who he is. And I got very, very comfortable with this is me. And I fell in love with myself for the first time ever at 27, 28, 20. I'm about 28 years old. I fell in love with myself for the first time ever. Ever. It's the first time I fell in love with myself. I was about 28 years old. Have you fallen in love with yourself? Have you accepted who you are? 
where you are at this time and place in your life. Have you gotten comfortable with who you are? <clears throat> no, no. Stop talking about who you want to be. Stop, stop talking about where you're trying to go. Have you first gotten comfortable with who you are right now? Right now. Right, who you are right now. Are you cool? Are you in love with that person right now? Because where you want to be, where you're trying to go, you can never get there until you start where you are. It's the first thing the GPS asks you when you're trying to key in a destination. What's the first thing you got to do? You got to put in where you are first. GPS needs to know your location first. Are you in love with you? Who you are at, uh, at this day, in this present moment in history, are you in love with that person right now? Forget about where you want to go, who you want to become in the next five years, 10 years. Are you in love with you, that person right now? Are you in love with that person? Because it starts there. Have you accepted that person? Because until you do, you'll never get to where you want to be because you're putting in a coordinates to where you're going, but the starting location that you're putting in is false, it's fake, it's not real. So if I say I want to go to California and the GPS is asking me where I'm from, where I, where I am, and I'm in St. Louis, but I keep punching in, I'm in New York. The GPS is going to create a route for me from New York to California. That's not the route I need. So until you accept and fall in love with the you that you are right now, flaws and all, you'll never get up from here and go where you're trying to go and get where you're trying to get and become who you're trying to become. I was about 28 years old when I fell in love with Cortez the first time ever. And it's been on and popping ever since. And after I fell in love with that version of Cortez, I said, you know what? I can be better. It says, when I fell in love with that, that version of Cortez, you know what I said? It says, I love you so much, my dude, that I'm not going to let you stay in this condition. I'm so in love with you, bro, that I'm not going to let you be less than your potential. See, are you in love with yourself enough? Today, the person you are right now, all of your flaws, do you love that person enough to make sure they don't stay there? To make sure you don't stay there. I love that Blaine, divorce your story and marry your truth. I had to fall in love with me, flaws and all, crazy as all get out, hurt, damaged, all of that. But when I fell in love with me, I said, I love you so much, dude, that I'm not going to let you stay in this condition. And we went to work. We went to work. And I'm still a work in progress, but I love myself now so much that I'm going to continue to work on me. Right. So you got to get to a place of acceptance. Number uh, five, I believe we are on is, or the next one, I forget the numbers. We're on confession. 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 Here, here's why some of us can't get to where we can fall in love with ourselves. It's frightening to admit to yourself that you've made a mistake, a poor choice, a bad decision, or that you've uh, behaved irresponsibly. It's even worse to acknowledge such things publicly. When you do confess, even if it's to a close friend uh, or a much loved family member, you open yourself to attack, criticism, condemnation, and abandonment. It's downright humiliating 
to admit to someone you respect that you're helpless or clueless. Yet it's only through a humble spirit that the light of divine can enter. Telling the truth, not just to yourself, but also to another person opens doors of your mind to spiritual light and moral strength. I see you, uh, Queen Giovanni says, I love myself. Anybody else want to make that public declaration? Uh, Angel says, I think Facebook stopped streaming. I am unable to watch. Can you verify? We're back on over here, uh, Angel. It did. It did. It stopped for a second, but we're back on uh, on Facebook. Uh, anybody else want to make that public declaration? It's, it's liberating. Everybody on the stream watching right now. If you can say this in truth, I want you to type. I love myself. I want you to type. I love myself in the chat. I want you to type, I love myself in the chat. Somebody out there is going to type that. And that's the first time that they've ever said that to themselves. You just type, I love myself in the chat, man. Because when you get to that place and then you start taking the action that love is. You start taking the action that love is toward yourself. Is liberating, man. So we're talking about confession, man. Confession. You know, I did some jacked up stuff in my life because I was a jacked up person. And I had to confess. Right now, today, if I see certain people in my life, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is I'm sorry. Right now, today, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people and I had to say, I'm sorry for the way that I treated you. And it's been eating at me all this time. And I treated you that way because I was sick. I didn't know I was sick, but I was sick. And I treated you that way because I was sick. But I want you to know that I'm sorry. I want you to know that I'm sorry. Right. Confession is hard, man. It's frightening to admit to yourself, first of all, then to other people that, man, I didn't have it all together. I was putting on a face that said I had it all together, but really I was hurting inside and that caused me to hurt you. What's up, paper girl? I'm sorry. Until you love yourself, you're not going to do what you need to do to get to that place you want to go. Right. So you have to get it says telling the truth, not just to yourself, but also to another person opens the doors of your mind to spiritual light and moral strength. Spiritual life and moral strength comes out of your confession that, hey, I am utterly and completely helpless. Moral strength comes from you being able to say, I love myself enough that I can admit that I do not have it all together. I made some poor choices that led me to this place in my life, but I love myself enough that I'm not going to stay here. It frees the mind of guilt, which in turn shuts down the defense mechanism when you have no guilt your self-esteem rises when you have no need to defend yourself you have little cause to be angry this comes out of confession y'all this comes out of me taking an internal evaluation saying you know what i messed up cortez when i can confess that i messed up then it's going to free my mind of guilt, which in turn shut down my defense mechanisms. How many of you guys are floating through life and your guards are constantly up? You know what you're defending? You're defending a lie. See, when you walk in your truth, you don't have to have your defenses up 24-7. But when you out here pretending, 
then you got your defense mechanism. You got your force field up in full force because you're defending a lie. But when you confess and you get rid of that guilt, you can get rid of that shame. You don't have to be defensive all day, every day. Hey, I'm walking in my truth. This is who I am. If it offends you, oh, well, but this is who I am. Some of you guys got some walls built up around you. You're trying to defend a lie because you haven't confessed to yourself that you know what? This ain't really who I am. You haven't fallen in love with yourself and say, you know what? I'm completely comfortable with who I am, flaws and all. I love me the way I am, but I love me so much the way that I am that I'm not going to let me stay this way. I'm going to work on myself. It frees the mind of guilt, which in turn shuts down the defense mechanism. When you have no guilt, your self-esteem rises. When you have no, no need to defend yourself, you have little cause to be angry. When you walk in your truth, you have no need to defend yourself. This is who I am in this dispensation of time. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Just walking around angry because we're mad at who uh, we're pretending to be. That's, that's it. No, and, and more mad at people who aren't accepting who we're pretending to be. We're mad at people who, that ain't you, dog. Come on, keep it real. Now we mad at them because they see through our facade. It's crazy, Corbell. You got to walk in your truth, man. You got to walk in your truth. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, everything stays up on YouTube and Facebook. I appreciate that mojo. I appreciate that. Uh, the book, this book is up from here, reclaiming the male spirit, a guide to transforming emotions into power and freedom. Can you tell I got a little bit of freedom going on that came from my emotions? I transformed those emotions to power and freedom. Can you tell? This is the Yala Van Zant up from here, reclaiming the male spirit. When I when I first when I first was strong enough to come out and tell my family that I had been molested, my sister, who's a psychologist, she went and got this for me. Book means the world to me. She got this and she said, "Hey, this will help you as you're going through." And she was right. And she was right. And I began the process of overcoming. A lot. So this 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 is a powerful, powerful tool right here. And I think a lot of brothers need to understand that we are literally suppressing our power by not feeling our emotions. We're suppressing our power by trying to bottle up and 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 resist the feelings that we get when we're angry, when we're fearful, when we're when we when we feel shame, when we uh, didn't take responsibility. See, we're bottling up our power. And I will tell you this, man. I keep telling you, when your enemy knows you better than you know yourself, and we're dealing with an enemy that is powerful as we are, as powerful as they are, it only makes sense that they teach, train, and educate on us how to be the exact opposite of who and what we truly are. Think about what 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 TV teaches that a man is the name of the book is up from here by Yala Van Zandt. Up from here. The enemy that we have to face knows us better than we know ourselves. And because they know us so well, because they know us so well, they're training us to be the exact opposite of what and who they know us to truly be. And that 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 creates a, a win for them because it's like, hey, if I have the opportunity to transform someone psychologically into half of what they truly are before I go into battle with them, doesn't that just make good sense? That just makes good sense, right? If I can take you and create you and turn you into half of what you really are, and now we go to fight, we go to war. 
I stand a greater chance to win. I stand a greater chance to win. They are teaching us to be the exact opposite of what a real man is, because while we're in that state, then they can rape and pillage our communities. And that's what's happening right now today. But no more. Not today, colonizer. Right. Uh, so confession. So you got to get to the place where you can confess that, you know what, this is my doing. This is who I am. This is my truth. I'm going to walk in it right now. My truth says that I might be a little offensive to you because I ain't where I want to be yet. But I have to accept where I am first. I have to confess that I made a bunch of mistakes that led me to this space right now. And here I am. In all my raw and rare form, this is me. And I've accepted me. You got to accept me or you can get out of my life. Point blank and period. Now, if you stay in my life and because I love me and because I accepted where I am, I'm not comfortable with where I am, but I have accepted it. So I'm working on better. I'm working on a new version of myself every day. Every day. All right. So I promise you guys tomorrow. <laughs> It's Thursday. We're going to go. Uh, I'm just going to have this, this stuff is so I, I, I tell you all all the time, man. This is my therapy. You guys are listening to me talk to myself out loud. I know it sounds like I'm talking to y'all. I'm not. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to me. Y'all just get to hear it out loud. This is my therapy. Right. I've been through a lot of trauma in my life. This is my therapy. So I'm talking to me. So uh, you guys just get to witness a private therapy session with myself. And I'm going to try to get through uh, the rest of these tomorrow. I can't promise you I will, though, because this, this brings up so much for me. And I know so many brothers can use this. I, I know it, man. And I promise you, bro. When we get to this place where we start using these spiritual tools and we start really, really becoming who we truly are. You know, I talk about money and all that stuff so that we can rebuild our communities. But when we become truly what we are, then we become the cornerstone of our community from which a nation can be built upon. Then we, when we become who we truly are, we become the stone that the builders rejected. And on this rock, we build our dynasty. When a man becomes the man that he truly is, and enough of us find that place within, we become the stone that the builders rejected. And it is on that rock that we build. So I appreciate you guys all for listening. I know this is a departure and a deviation away from our normal content, but every now and then I just got to go where the spirit leads, man. I, <laughs> I just really do. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. If you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area this Saturday, I'll be there from one to three. Um, let me see real quick if I can get the address up for you guys. Um, let me get the address up for you real quick. Uh, come on, come on, come on. I'm trying to pull my event up. Uh, and get the name of the event or, or the name of the bookshop that I'm going to be at on. Oh, well, I might need to scroll up a little bit. And it's right there. All right. So it's called the uh, Dallas, the DFW Generational Wealth Building uh, Workshop. And it is going to be at uh, the Doc Bookshop. Uh, that is 6637 Meadowbrook Drive, Fort Worth, Texas. Seven six one one two. You can go to my page and check out the uh, uh, the event right there. So uh, that is this Saturday. 
Sunday, I will be in Kansas City uh, working with Mona Johnson, uh, Johnson Family Legacy and her team. Uh, I'll let you guys know a little bit more about that if you're uh, interested in uh, if you're in the Kansas City area. We won't, won't have a whole lot of time in Kansas City, but I'll let you know what we'll probably do a meet and greet at, at a black owned restaurant up there in Kansas City on Sunday. So Saturday is Dallas, Sunday, Kansas City. Um, and then I'll be back in Kansas City uh, uh, Saturday, the 24th for a super Saturday for my folks who are in my econ in Kansas City. That flyer is coming out uh, here shortly. Uh, we'll do a, a two and a half, three hour training and then a business presentation uh, in Kansas City Sunday, uh, the 24th. Um, and I think Saturday, the 31st, Super Saturday in St. Louis. So I, I got a lot of stuff going on, man. We just going to keep this thing rock, rocking and rolling. Uh, yeah, I got to get down to H-Town, man. Um, absolutely, Jay. Uh, and that's coming, man. So we're going to put some stuff together because I got about 15 teammates in the area of of, of Houston. So uh, that's coming. And plus, the Tesha Water family is down there. I love to come hang out with my man, Larry Leonard, uh, and his whole crew. Uh, so if you want to know more about the Black Wealth Movement, text Black Wealth Movement to 314-874-6887. We're a financial education company. We teach you how to build wealth from scratch. Uh, the Generational Wealth Building Conference coming up in April 6th through the 8th. Um, uh, so you can go to wealth.joincortezenow.com to get tickets for that. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on, man. So you want to plug in and stay plugged in. Uh, so until I talk to you tomorrow, I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every one of you. Peace out, y'all.